verse 6. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had on the back of it four wings from a fowl. The beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. In the book of Daniel, chapter 7, Daniel was one of the, one of the Jews that was in the captivity of the Babylonians. And the Persians had rose up at this time. And he was in the Babylonian Persian captivity. And the Persians had succeeded the Babylonians. And at this time, Daniel was receiving visions of a beast that had four heads and dominion was given unto him. In the Holy Bible, this beast, which was the third beast to rise up on the earth, which was the third empire that would rule the earth. This was Alexander the Great in biblical prophecy. And the Lord showed him as a leopard with four heads in this part of the Bible prophecy. And Alexander the Great rose up during this time and formed the Hellenistic world. And he came out of Macedonia, and after the death of his father, father Philip, he inherited his Macedonian kingdom, the first kingdom of the Greeks, which are the biblical Edomites, Esau in the Bible. And he crossed over into Asia, and he went down into Palestine, the land of Jerusalem, and he went into Egypt and conquered these areas all the way through the east, through Babylon, Susa, and the vast, vast per Persian Empire and absorbed these other empires like Babylon and Assyria into this empire. And the kings of Persia were reigning until Alexander was stirred up by the Most High and he took over where the Persians had left off. All this was foretold in the Bible. And this is in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 6. Alexander's kingdom was referred to a leopard with four heads and four wings. So here's the uh, chart from the book of David Ben-Gorion, the Jews in their land. And on this chart, you see the Ptolemaic kings and the Seleucid kings, and you see the gross defense look on this man's face in the effeminate look of Ptolemy. These coins were minted during that time, and this was a descendant of Ptolemy. So Ptolemy and Seleucid, these were Greeks. They were called in their language, from their land. In the Hebrew tongue, they were called the Edomites, or Edomi, sons of Seir, Esau. So Esau broke off and became the nation of Edomi, or Edom, and they had their own empire in the southern parts of Israel. Later on in history, the Most High started using Esau to fulfill his plans, and they came out during the time of the Greeks. And up here you see the uh, Potomac Potom Potom kings around 323 BC. This is when Alexander died. So his four generals, and these are the two generals here, they took over most of the areas of the east. As you see on this map here, you see Jerusalem right here in the middle. This is where this wicked group came from, Ancios Anthony's. And they came out of this wicked group from the Ptolemies and Seleucids. The Seleucids was ruling over there in the east. And the Ptolemy had Egypt. So during this time in the Most High Plans, when he gave the earth into the hands of the wicked, according to Job 9.24, and in the book of Daniels, the Greeks were coming into power. And after Alexander died, his generals took over, and this was his administrative government of democracy spread throughout the East, the Hellenistic world. And this was later on in history when you see about 16 dynasties of the Ptolemies, and they were inside Egypt, and they picked up all type of customs from Egypt and from the, from the East at that time. So at this time, the Ptolemic kings were ruling and influencing Jerusalem, and this is when they came up against the Maccabees and Judas and his family members at this time in biblical prophecy and history of the Bible. OK, 
show on the chart here, you see the, the Maccabean timeline up here with the Ptolemaic rulers and the Seleucid rulers that we showed you earlier. And Alexander conquers Asia and overthrows Tyree, Akkad, and other cities in the route to Egypt in 332 BC. So this is a timeline of Alexander the Great. He died in 323 BC. Uh, his generals fight for succession. So at that time, after Alexander died, you had the Maccabean rule, what they call him the Hasmoneans. And the, the word Hasmonean came from a lot of Greek influence because of uh, Israelites at that time were picking up on a lot of Greek customs and language. So the Hasmonean uh, descendants of the Maccabees line rule in their kingdom around 134 to 63 BC. See that? So this is when they start right after the Maccabean revolt, Matthias, the Hasmonean in, in this time. Judas Maccabees, they got on, on the chart here uh, about 166 to 160 BC. Jonathan, Simon, uh, Jonan, Hyphenus, all these brothers uh, they were called the Hasmonean kings. These were Israelites that had taken back over Jerusalem in the Maccabean revolt. And they had, uh, on archaeology here, you see they, they mentioned their own coins in the Lashawan Kodash. And you see, this is a timeline right before the Roman Empire. Over here you see the Romans, archaeology. And the Romans came later on after the Maccabean revolt and the takeover. So then around this time, you get down here, that's when Mahasha was born. They estimate around 7 BC. Herod dies in 4 BC. So around that timeline of the Greek calendar, that's when you get the Roman rule. But the Maccabean time, when the Gagaka was instituted, or the dedication, that was during that time of Judas Maccabees, around 166 to 160 BC. And these were these great brothers that trusted in Aniyah and returned to the law and had great wars and victories for the glory of the Most High, the power of Israel, Yahweh, and the law that Moses gave on my side. So this is the timeline between the Greeks and the Romans, the Maccabees, into the time that they fell. And after that, you had the uh, Herods, the Herodian dynasty that came in, and the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees, religious sects that sprang out of their existence as a result of the conflict of opinion concerning the matters of the law. And this is when our people went into all these different uh, uh, sects over there in the, the land of the East. And that, that was during the time of Rome. Just like today, Israel was divided up according to the scriptures, according to the angle of the Most High in Psalm 60 and other chapters of the Bible, Deuteronomy, and the books of the prophets because of our disobedience and our faith in following the commandments and law and breaking of the covenant. So this is the timeline of the Maccabean dynasty. This is a historical document from the book called The Jews in a Land by David Ben-Gurion on page 124. This is uh, in reference to the Israelites teaching the Greeks our Torah. This is how we got the so-called denominations of Judaism amongst so-called white people now. The Israelites were given a law, the land of Israel and a covenant, and the mercies of the Most High according to the scriptures. Now in the history of the Renaissance and throughout the ages, they changed it. And that's when they changed it during the Renaissance. So this is how they originally got their hands on the Torah. And it's gonna tell you in this caption on in the uh, this historical book. It says here in the second par paragraph, a letter of Orestes written in Egypt by a Jew in the 2nd century B.C. 
describes discussions between Ptolemy II and the high priest of the day on relations between the Egyptians dynasty and of Judea. And that's where we were living at, in the land of Israel, in Judea. That was our, our city called, in the province. And it says, and on the translation, see what it says here? And on the translation of the Bible into Greek. So they had to come to us to get the Torahs, because we had the Torahs and it was given to us. So there's nothing called Judaism. This is why the Hanukkah is, is, is European influence. It was called the Gagaka. And the Israelites were the ones that had the law, and those are our customs given to us by Anayak, Yahweh. See? So this says, through the letter might be considered the artistic creation of a new written wishing of an ideal, idealized Judea and its regime. It is accurate enough in a general historical content and description and tells how that the prisoners taken from Judea to Egypt during the war of Dionysi in the end of the 4th century B.C. So they had wars with our people. And one of the things that they did back then was that the Israelites uh, taught the Greeks our tongues. This is how you got the so-called white man in the Judaism denominations. And a lot of these Judaistic uh, denominational uh, teachings of the so-called white man has influenced a lot of Israelite camps. And this is why the Most High is going to have an elective Israel come up out of here that's going to purify themselves and sanctify themselves in the law and the testimony of the Old and New Testament so that they can be saved. And that's only for the elect and the remnant. The rest of our people that's following behind the so-called invitation false Jews in Revelations 2, 9 and 3, 9, they're going to be destroyed because they tell you in the Bible, if you receive that mark of the beast and the image of the beast, which is the misconceptions of scriptures and false Christianity by these so-called Europeans, then you're going to be destroyed by Mahashal in the second coming. And this is when it started. And this is one of the historical things that happened during the time of the Maccabees and during that time of the Greeks coming into our land.